Okay, so let's have a look at how to do an image prompt AI using Breeze FX. Now what this is, is basically taking a photo in Breeze, uploading into FX, and then using a text prompt to manipulate the image. So whereas with a face swap, we're taking an existing image and just basically swapping faces over. Uh, with text prompting, we're telling the AI using words what we want it to do. So therefore, uh, in this example, what we're going to do is try and turn me into an old man. So it's going to keep all my posing, it's going to keep my glasses on, but it's just going to try and uh, modify me to look more like an old man with wrinkly skin and grey hair. Now at this point, uh, the image prompt AI is only available for Breeze Booth for iPad, but support for DSLR Remote Pro is coming shortly. So let's jump into Windows and have a look how this works. So we're going to create a new FX config and we'll call it Old Man Steve. And we want to select the AI type. Okay, now we'll set the uh, positive prompt. Now I've got one that I've um, made earlier that I'm going to paste in. And that's hyper-realistic portrait of a very old man. Wrinkled skin, black and white, film grain, moody, sad, sad eyes, cracked skin, age spots, grey hair. So that should do the trick. Now we need to set the uh, prompt strength, which we typically always set to one. So it's basically just telling the AI how much importance to put on the description that you have given it. And we want to give it maximum importance. Then we have our image strength. So if we set the image strength to zero, then basically what's going to happen is that the AI is going to return an image that looks like a very old man, but not me. It's going to be just someone else that it's generated. If we set the image strength to one, then the AI will just return a picture of me. So we need to find a, a middle ground, basically. So typically, I'd start these things at about 0.5. Uh, so hopefully, it'll find somewhere between um, the AI version and the real me, in the, and we'll get a nice sort of mix in between. Now, you can also add a negative prompt. So um, if you've spent any time with AI, you might know that, for example, you, uh, AI is prone to doing disfigured fingers and hands so you could type in something like uh, mangled um, mangled fingers to try and stop it from um, generating disformities basically in people uh, but you'll need to spend a bit of time with all of these uh, the image prompt is actually quite tricky and it can be hard to get a really good result I think in most cases face swap is the best way to go uh, and keeping in mind you are using credits every time you test this uh, so just be patient with it and just consider whether face swap might you might in fact be the better option uh, for most most cases but there's definitely some great ways to use the image prompt and I think this old old person effect is sort of one of them uh, scrolling down steps, basically it's just the number of steps the AI uses, so the more steps typically the better results you get, but also slower, the slower the process. So I'm going to set it for about 30, and the seed is more of an advanced option. If, you, if, you know, if, if you've used AI a bit, you'll know what the seed is. If you don't know what seed is, uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much for now. So we'll go ahead and hit create, and that'll give us our um, URL that we need to paste into the event editor. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And we'll come into the event editor. Now I'm just going to use the same face swap event, but we're going to just switch out the um, URL. So we'll come into photos and we'll paste in the new uh, the new URL. Now one really important thing, or two really important things here with the um, uh, image prompt AI is that we need to set a maximum width here. Now at the moment we uh, support uploading a square cropped image at a maximum width of 1024 pixels. So you must set this to 1024 and you must also have your photo aspect ratio set to square as well. Now your final output on the print layout can be whatever you want it to be but the image that we capture and send up to the AI for now it needs to be square cropped at 1024. Uh, this will be uh, updated in the future with, uh, with new releases, but for now that's what it needs to be. If you don't do that, you'll find that it will error um, and you won't get returned a result. Uh, so that all looks set, so we'll OK that. So we should be good to come over to the iPad and we'll just jump into that event and we'll update it. OK, and we'll run that and we'll take a picture and see what we get. All right, so we'll give that about 10 seconds to process so we should get a result back.
Okay, so there we go. So that is a old man version of me, and I can see the resemblance is actually pretty good. I think we could probably adjust that a little bit. Uh, I've got some not the best lighting in here either, so I'm getting quite a strong um, blowout um, for the light, but um, never mind about that. But what we can do, and a nice thing about Breeze, is that we can also use apply filters in the iPad app itself to try and influence and affect the result. So I think doing this in black and white would actually be better. So I'm going to turn on the black and white filter and run that again. So I'll just give that a, a moment to, to process and get send us back a result. Yeah, so I think that looks a lot better uh, with the black and white. And you can see that it's also taken the concrete wall that we've got here um, and ran with that as well and put some cracks into it, which is kind of neat. Now let's have us go back into Breeze FX and just try and play around with this image likeness. So I'll go into here, Old Man Steve, and I'll edit it. So we have the strength currently set to 0 0.5. So let's, as a test, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 0 point. Uh, 0 0.2 uh, which I know is not going to give us a good result but let's just see what that does so we'll jump back into the iPad and we'll run another session we don't actually need to update it because the update's been done on the Breeze FX end Yeah, and so what you can see here, because we've now pushed it too far to the left, what it's returned is a picture of an old man, but that old man doesn't look like me. So let's edit this again. We'll jump back into to Windows. And to Breeze FX, rather, and we'll set that up to point, 0 0.9. Uh, we'll OK that. And we'll just go back to our iPad and we'll run another session. And most likely it'll probably look a bit too much like uh, the current version of me. Yeah, so that's basically returned a picture of me as what I sort of expected it would. So you need to find that balance. Uh, so we're going to come back into here. Uh, we started with 0 0.5. I'm going to try 0 0.65, so it's going to push it up a little bit more, so it should look a little bit more like me. We'll go one more time. And we'll see what we get this time. So that's a bit better, that might be uh, a little bit too far. It is quite fine fine grain the control so I can definitely see that I look older in that but maybe not as old as I'd like so we'll just go one more time and we'll edit it we might make this like 0 0.57 and we'll come back into the iPad um, I mean that's actually not, not, not a bad result but it's just not as old as I was uh, wanting Let's see how we go this time. Yeah, I think that's better. So that's basically, you know, definitely me. Uh, I'm looking quite old. Um, and I think most people that certainly know me would, would recognise that um, as me. So, so there you go. So this is something you do have to play around with quite a lot. And keeping in mind, as I said, you are using credits when you're testing. Um, you know, uh, for a lot of use cases, face swap will be better because you have more control. This will give you varied results at times. And it may uh, look great on one person, be a bit hit and miss on the other. Um, but it's AI, it's constantly evolving, so I think it's exciting to see where this goes, but definitely worth playing with. But if you have any questions, just jump into the comments and let me know.